in the video linked in below, I talked about rulers and guides in Affinity Designer. In this video, let's take a deeper dive in the ruler and introduce the basics of the grid. I have a document open with two artboards. Let's enable the ruler by pressing the shortcut key Command or Ctrl R or by using the view menu. A horizontal ruler for the X values will be appended to the top and a vertical ruler for the Y values will be appended to the left of the canvas. In the intersection of the two rulers, located at the top left, we can see the used units, which in this case are pixels. We can right-click on this area and choose the unit we like from the pop-up menu. By the way, the calculations are based on your document setup, which were set when you created the document. You can of course change them using the document setup from the file menu. The starting point of the ruler is always set per artboard. Notice how the zero position changes when I switch between artboards. As shown in the previous video, we can create guides by dragging from the ruler. Let me add a center horizontal and vertical guide to the current artboard. Just like the ruler, guides are linked to an artboard. Switching to another artboard hides the guides of the previous artboard. The ruler starting point or the zero point is by default the top left corner of the document or the artboard. But we can change this. We can click and drag from the unit indicator to position the zero point of our ruler. If you have snapping turned on, it will make use of snapping. In this case, I'll move the zero point of the ruler to the center of the artboard. Keep in mind that this will affect the transform panel. When I add a rectangle at the center, you can see that the X and Y values are zero. Because the ruler zero points are stored per artboard, switching to the artboard on the right will restore the ruler zero point of this artwork, which was the top left of the artboard. I can change the zero point of the ruler for this artboard. When we switch back to the left artboard, notice the zero point of this artboard has been restored. Interestingly enough, the positions of elements are universal. So for example, when we look at the properties of this rectangle in the transform panel, it has zero for X and I for position. When I copy this to the other artboard, notice how the rectangle is pasted to the same position relative to the artboard. But the X and I values are different. Pretty cool. Let's remove the rectangles before moving on. If you want to reset the default zero point position, you can quickly do this by double clicking on the unit indicator on the ruler. Now let's talk about grids. I'm not going to take a very deep dive, but show you some tips you might have missed while using grids. To enable or disable the grid, you can use the view menu or the shortcut key control or command apostrophe. The grid will always be shown for the active artboard and the settings of the grid are also stored per artboard. To change the grid properties, open the grids and axis from the view menu. This will open up the grid and axis setup dialog where you can change the color of your grid, but more importantly, the setup of your grid. In the automatic mode, Affinity will create a grid for you based on your document or artboard. In basic, you have control over the spacing of the grid lines and the number of subdivisions between them. The advanced and cube options open up a lot of crazy possibilities which I will not touch in this video. I'll go to the advanced mode and only turn on the uniform checkbox. What I really want to show is the one option that most people oversee, which is the option of show access editing handles, which I will turn on. Let's close this dialog and look at our canvas and you probably noticed it. We have this red and green control handle. By default, grids, just like the ruler, start from the top left corner. This might not always be ideal. And with this control, we can position the starting point of the grid. For example, to the center of the artboard, which might make more sense depending on your design. Before we move the position of the grid, make sure the artboard is not selected. 
as the art port handle overlaps the grid control point. Instead of moving the grid, you probably start resizing your artboard. A cool tip is to lock your artboard temporarily, which will also hide the artboard handles as it can no longer be selected. Now that the artboard handles are no longer in the way, we can take the control point and move it to where we like. Pretty cool. Another cool feature is that we can also adjust the grid by dragging the ends of the green and the red line. Because I turned off the uniform checkbox in the advanced mode, I can resize the X and the I independently. To make them the same size, we can double click on the end of the line and it will get the same size as the other line. You can also hold the control or command key to make sure the ratio is maintained while resizing the grid. Once you're done setting up your grid, you can go back to the grid and axis dialog to turn off the editing handles. As mentioned before, the changes made to the grid will only apply to the active artboard. When I switch to the other artboard, the grid of this artboard is shown. Pretty neat. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.